Okay, you're falling off a cliff. You somehow didn't know about her boyfriend. Dang, you're in a tight spot. Time to break the way down into several parts. Try grabbing anything you see as you plummet. Shrubs, trees, or rocks. This way, you divide a long fall into several short ones. With each new fall, the impact will decrease. If enough of the impact is absorbed, it means you've got a better chance of survival. And another chance at love. But not with her. Same for if you drop out a window. Try to cling to anything on your way. It probably won't hold you, but at least you'll have several falling intervals to help decrease your speed. A canopy to stop you can be a real lifesaver, no matter if it's plastic or glass. It'll hurt either way, but you'll survive. Maybe. You also need to bend your knees a little. If bent, your legs will touch the ground simultaneously, and the consequences will be less severe. Another tip is that whenever you land, try to do so on the tips of your toes and never on straight and locked legs. Don't forget to cover your head with your arms. They will help protect your noggin, no matter if you land on concrete or in a puddle of mud. Now, quicksand is not as dangerous as shown in movies. If you get stuck in quicksand, dang, you're in a tight spot. First off, stay calm. Then, you're not likely to sink more than up to your waist. Toss away anything that makes you heavier. Shoes, bags, even clothing. Wiggle your legs to create room for water. It'll help you get away. Your arms should always be up. Try floating, but not on your stomach. Move backward with small steps. Big steps are harder to take, so it'll take longer to get out. When you reach solid surface, roll out of that quicksand. Surviving a wild animal attack may be challenging, but a crowd of people is not any less dangerous. The crowd may move like a fluid, not letting you escape. If you're trapped between hundreds of people, dang, you're in a tight spot. Rule number one is not to stop. Stopping is the fastest way to fall. If you actually do fall, make an air pocket. Your arms should be placed above your face and chest, embracing them. If you manage to stay upright, as soon as you feel the surge coming, move with it and sideways at the same time. If you're lost in the wilderness and need to go fishing, you can use a can tab. Shape it in the form of a hook. Cut it at a slant and trim off the metal to make it look like an actual hook. The main thing is to create a sharp point. A can can also become a makeshift cooker. Take a can and cut out a hole from the side. Put some kindling inside and set it on fire. You can fry an egg on top of it. Dental floss can be super handy for surviving in the wilderness. First, use it as a fishing line together with a can tab hook. It can also serve as a clothesline stretched between two trees. It's thin, yet a single strand can hold up to 5 pounds. You can make a spear by binding a long stick and a knife together with dental floss. It's also quite flammable, so if you don't have any kindling to set larger pieces of wood on fire, try burning it. Dental floss can also be great makeshift shoelaces. A simple plastic bottle can make a very strong rope if you have a good knife. First, you need to find a small stump. It should have a diameter about the same as your bottle. Make a slit across the middle of the stump. Then cut a notch out of the stump large enough for your knife blade to fit inside. Cut off the bottleneck and make a small notch on its edge. Its width depends on the rope width you want. Place the edge of the bottle inside the center slit and put the knife in the notch in the stump with the blade towards the slit. Start slowly dragging the bottle through the slit. You'll see the bottle spin. As it spins, the blade will cut out the rope. You can use it to build a hut because it can secure logs really well. Now, a human can go several days without food, but there's no way we can survive without water. Water in the wild can be delicious sometimes, but if you feel like it's not safe to drink, you may need a makeshift water filter. Start with a fire. Boiling water may not be enough, so as soon as the fire ashes are cold, grind them to a powdery consistency. Don't use charcoal you randomly found in the forest. You never know what's in there. Then, you need a plastic bottle. Cut off the bottom and make a hole in the cap. Turn it upside down, put in some charcoal, 3 inches are enough, and pour the water over it. The dripping water is ready to drink. 
To catch any excess charcoal, wrap the cap with a piece of clean cloth for extra filtration. Okay, you're getting hungry, and you probably need to start a fire. Dang, you just don't have any matches or a lighter! Empty your pockets to see if you can make a makeshift fire starter. If you have a battery, probably the one from your flashlight, and a gum wrapper, that's enough! You need to cut a thin strip of the foil wrapper, yet long enough to connect the two ends of the battery. The middle of the strip should be slimmer than the ends. Get closer to the pile of dry grass, small logs, or even some paper, whatever you're going to use to start your fire. The foil strip will ignite in seconds, setting the kindling on fire. Mosquitoes are a real pain, and there are loads of them in the woods. You can make your own DIY repellent to keep those bad guys away. All you need is an orange, a lemon, or any other citrus fruit that's full of essential oils. Peel an orange and rub the peel directly on your skin, crumpling it a bit beforehand to make those precious essential oils come out. One more useful way of keeping mosquitoes at bay is to add a few orange peels to your tinder. While burning, the essential oils will release and frighten those pesky guys away. If you want to send a signal that you're lost and it's an emergency, cover three small fires with any green vegetation, like grass, and then cover it again with some wet fabric. You'll have big, white smoke puffs. Three puffs in a row means emergency. Adding some oil to your fire will turn the smoke black. If you don't have oil, use birch bark instead. Remember, the higher you start the fire, the better. So climb to a visible area. If someone had your hands tied together, dang, you're in a tight spot. The first thing to do is move your wrists to loosen that tie. Ropes can usually be cut through with friction against hard and sharp objects. If you're tied up with a zip tie, try to break it. Clench your fists, press the knuckles together, raise your hands above your head, and then bring them down sharply. The pressure will snap the tie. You may also try to slip out of the zip-tied knot. First, clench your fists. The wrists will go larger, like this, widening the bonds. When you relax your hands, the bonds loosen, so you may slip out. Duct tape can be chewed through, or if you moisten it, it will turn softer and easy to loosen. You can even moisten it with your saliva. Crossing a water current may be more dangerous than it seems. When crossing, choose a straight and wide section. Before stepping into the water, check if the current's not too fast. Throw a stick in it, and if it moves faster than your average walking pace, consider crossing at a different location. Or you could just look around for a boat that's nearby. No need to be silly about it.